It's okay, do your thing. No worries. Try to communicate in the forum. Nothing starts perfect. Nothing. Hello? Hello. I can hear you. Hello. Nothing what? The baby born, the baby is supposed to be a perfect gift. People are like, oh, children, perfect gift. In fact, Nine months you have to carry the baby. A lot of antinatural and treatments just to have this baby. But when the baby is born, the baby is born dead. They have to wrap up the baby and clean the baby. Is that correct? How can something so perfect come out? Come out. It comes dead. It's perfect, but it comes what? It's perfect, but it comes what? Now you have to do what? You have to clean the baby. Hello? Hello? 
Wall Street was not built in a week. And I warned all those enemies that joined us. I said, the worst thing for you to do is to pray. Stay through the process. And I knew they were going to pray. Because they're out. So I'm reiterating what I've already said in the forum. We are going to perfect the process. In fact, let me tell you the truth. 50% of the people you have hired will not be working here two months from now. I already know that. That's why I insisted the video, the, uh, what's it called, the induction training, because I will not repeat it, to anybody we hire, because we're going to up upgrade our hiring. You've heard me in 100 supervisors have to do what? No sentiment. I don't do sentiment. If you like my brother, I will fire you. I don't, I don't do brother. I don't do tribe. I don't do country. I don't care about that. If you don't perform, complaint from today is what? I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear it. People that complain are people that depend on aid. I want help. Help me. Support me. Give me. Me, 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 me. Help, help, help. Why? And some of the misconceptions on the brochure about analysts, that thing is the mentors, the mentors coming in have to do 10 ACP. It's not for you. So please, everybody, I'm appealing to you. I don't appeal. I'm, I don't appeal. I demand. This place is not democracy. Ugandans, eh. It's not democracy. This is private sector. We say you do, you say nothing. If you want to say, start your own business. Hello? Hello. You want to say, you do what? That's how private sector functions. Most people here don't understand the concept of private sector. I don't need your opinion to make a decision. The government does. It's representative democracy. So you need to contribute for them to decide. Here, there's no representative anything. It's private sector. If we say, that's it. So that mentality needs to start changing from government and the way you depend on public sector to a private sector mentality. Somebody even told me today that, oh, when they get 10 ACPA, they'll start earning $1,000. Now, let's forget about the fact that that's a misunderstanding. Even in your brain, you should know that is false. That's how you become victim of scammers. If you can believe that, you can be a victim of fraudsters. That you register 10 people for children's support. They will start paying you $1,000. From where? Who's going to make sure this gets perfect? Who's going to make sure this dream to have Wall Street here in Bukota, I'm going to make sure it becomes perfect? It wasn't, nothing is born perfect, not even the baby. Who's going to make sure it becomes perfect? Hands down. The first rule in making sure is zip. After the zip, patience. Watch what I'm doing. Watch. I'm not an experiment. I'm not an experiment. I've never been an experiment. It's the first sentence I made in Uganda in that one empty room. I am not an experiment. Six months, you can see. 
We're going to perfect the process. I was sharing with someone in the car, one analyst. The people that manufacture our stuff, our tablets and whatever, in Asia. We were trying to convince them to manufacture the thing here. Of course, they refused. So I said, okay, here is the deal. Our first order will be one million phones. They said, wow, one million phones. We said, yeah, they said, we like that business. We'll give you this car. I said, no, I don't want this car. You're going to manufacture the phones here in Uganda. And now, they're running up and down looking for how to make it work where? And we're still perfecting that. But we've gotten them now where they have to make it work here. Don't tell me it has to be manufactured in China. No. If it can be manufactured in China, it can also be. Period. That's a process too. When I met to the minister, the minister said, wow, if you can manufacture this phone here, ha, what can't we do for you? I'm looking at him thinking, my friend, I will manufacture the phone, I will manufacture cars. Hey, hey, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> Manufacture phone. We will do that one like that. Yeah. But we can't do these things with that mentality. Where's my lunch? <laughs> my friend, let me tell you, when I first registered, hired this original kid, those 17 ladies, we had no lunch. It was a dream I set for them. I said, we're going to be the company that people eat lunch. Even when I set the dream for them, they found it a bit on their list. They said, chairman, no one does that in Uganda. I said, we're going to do it. They had to do target deal, deal, deal. Then I got to the point, I said, oh, our revenue looks good now. Let's start having lunch. That's how it, it became a reality. Then people came and enjoyed the fact that we give lunch and transport. Now, we now have a certain set of people, the supervisors, who now came and think is their right. Can you imagine? You now came and now think the lunch is your right. Something that we built as a team is now your right. How? Let me tell you, Africans are fond of running everything to the ground. Africans. Build it, they come and do what? And that's what they do. That's why we're not nice. When you say, I don't like the way people are spoken to. That's how we speak to people. <laughs> to keep all those kind of people where? Far away from here. We don't talk to you nicely. We tell you to get the fuck out of here. We call you motherfucker. That's what we do. That's our culture here. You don't like it, what do you do? It's very simple. You don't stay here and complain. You get out. Because we don't want anyone to come and run down our hard work to the ground. The way Africans run everything to the ground. The supervisors are wanting to really talk. You are the worst sort of people we've had here. These people answering the supervisor now. You're the worst set of people. I've tried you so many different ways. I excuse you too. I said, oh, you came when we were doing one million you pop. Maybe it was too high. Another thing again, problem. Another any area we put you is a problem. Higher analysts, 20 people. You lie to them. You make stupid promises just so that you can get 20 people. Why? This company does not beg people to even subscribe as customers. We don't beg people for anything. Why? We hold innovation. The innovator does not beg. We hold innovation. Why are you going to buy a tablet and your child gets paid till they're 21? Okay, you go buy the tablet then, let's see. There's no here. 
So we don't beg you for it. We don't plead with you to enroll. We don't. And if you delay me with the enrollment, I'll do one program, gather 100,000 parents, and that day I'll sell one million of that ACP. All this demanding, talk to me nicely, do this nicely, do that. We don't do that here. So hundreds of your supervisors definitely have to become analysts. If you think you're worthy, when you become analysts, you walk your way back up again. For now, hundred, bam, that way. Hundred analysts up that way. Until we get the kind of quality we're looking for. We're going to perfect this. Perfect. I've seen those people that walk in Wall Street at the top of it. I've seen many of them. I know what I'm looking for. And we're going to find them. And I told you, people will travel from overseas. When we, we are building a museum here, you know that. Ah. Right here, we have designed the whole thing. It's the world's first economic war museum. We're going to build it here on this ground now that we're looking. So by the time we finish building that museum, maybe a month from now or six weeks from now, the brand, the value of everything here will do what? It attracts better people. People will leave banking. People will leave top positions. We are preparing for the future. That's what we do here. We are always thinking about next week, next month. Not today. And I told you, hold the job seriously to disappear from your hand. You think it's a joke. Because of how you got it, you know? You got it so easily. So you think it's easy. It will go from you. I guarantee you that. From these two buildings, the whole 25 companies will, will spread across all of Africa. You will see how it will work. We sell a million cars a year. I'll give you an instance. We sell a million cars a year and make $20,000. We make $20 billion. If we make $20 billion, you better be sure that 6 or $7 billion will touch the people here. Because the Lord said the husbandman is the first partaker of the fruit. If you can't put your mind to that direction and pay whatever price needs to be paid to get there, my friend, go and find something else to do. I don't want to hear any more. I don't want. No drama. You come in, the computers are not working. It's okay. It's what? It's okay. They're fixing them. It's fine. We told you when we brought you here on the 18th of, of June, that from that 18th of June to the end of the month, we're going to go through a period. Is it not? Yeah, period training, period adjustment, period fixing people in. It's not, a, it's not an easy process to employ 5,000 people at the same time, my friend. From 18th to now, it's only three days. You're already complaining. If you get a job, really, you have to work in that job close to six weeks before you get paid. Anywhere in the world. They will train you for about two weeks plus, no pay. In fact, if you get a job anywhere in the world, your family will have to support you for the first almost a month and a half of getting that job. That's how long it takes for any company to assimilate new workers. And put them on their payroll and then start paying them. Six weeks. And it was supposed to be you work, the analyst who works... The whole of June, trading, trying to understand the system, trying to learn the platform, all of that. The whole of June. Then you'll be expecting your first salary by the end of July. Really, that's how any corporation anywhere in the world functions. But what did I do? I said, okay, if you can be a very good analyst, 
and close 30 deals before the end of the month, you will get salary when? When? In the, in the month of June. If you don't meet it, it's okay. It's just for the ones who can. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. My friend, what we're building here is a self-sustained entity. Is what? Self-sustained. Yeah, we don't require loan, aid, grant, this, not need anything. Self-sustained. You're going to do it our way so that it can be self-sustained. So that even when you retire from here, you have retired. Your short development channel will always make money and your retirement benefit will always come into your account. Why? Because you have confidence in the culture of self-sustenance. Right now, Uganda's government budget is 40% financed by donors. How much percent? That's almost half. Donors, like somebody's giving you money to take care of your country. Huh? That thing can easily be avoided. Too easy. Redirect the load can cut Uganda from borrowing money. I can show you the numbers. I can sit on you and show you the mathematics here and there. The forty percent borrowing will stop. Then, then you become an independent country. Mm -hmm. huh? Because now you're what? You're a dependent nation. So your sovereignty is meaningless. Your sovereignty has no meaning. Because he that pays the piper, what? Detects the tune. That's a saying. It's an English saying. He that pays the piper, what? So you don't want foreigners to be paying you to sustain your government. You need to drive up economic activity on the private sector to empower your government. See, those donor aids are coming from corporations from those countries. Hello? Hello. UK gives you money. From where? From Shell from British Tobacco, from whatever UK company, HSBC, that is making money where? Overseas. So they bring the money where? To the government. And then the government will take some and do what? And give you as what? As aid. Then as they're giving you the aid, they're telling you, well, that, leave it for us. This other thing, you can't do it. Here, you can't. We cannot afford to be anything but self-sustained. You cannot. There's no direction but self-sustained. Because we're going to spoil the whole country, the whole Uganda. We're going to spoil this. You got, I, I hate to say this. It sounds arrogant. Uganda is too small for this company. Too small. We overrun Uganda with development like that. Like what? We we'll overrun it. Just overrun the whole entire country with development. Just like that. But we have to remain true to our values. One, we are independent. If you don't have that mentality, this is not the place for you. Go find some work as clerk or receptionist somewhere. You sit down, month end, what? They give you some peanut and you do what? And you go. Look at the average salary in Uganda is 200,000. Let me tell you what it means. When you hear that the average salary of the country is 200,000, like Ugandan shillings, it means that the private sector does not place value on the human resources in the country. Huh? They don't place what? Value. Why don't they place value? Because people come and they complain. People come and they don't produce. People come and they demand. People come and so the employers are tired. So they pay you 200K and say, you have no value to be anyway. So I might just pay you 200K. We pay you 1 million, not because we're better than those employers. No. Most of you, Mr. Say, the chairman is kind. He's better than those employers that don't pay. No. 
I'm not kind. This is business. Kind what? We pay you one million because I have confidence that your potential is better than 200K. We have confidence that what you're going to contribute to us is value of at least a million shillings. So if you don't give us the value that we're paying you, a lot of businessmen are watching me in Uganda here. They're watching. They're like, huh? You're paying Uganda's one million. <laughs> Let's see how that's going to work out. <laughs> Let's see how that's going to work out. In fact, the man I bought this, we bought this building from this building. We bought it from somebody. The person we bought this from told me to my face. He said, Charles, wages here is 200K. Why are you giving yourself extra problems? Because I have confidence that you're going to prove yourself to be worth more than 200K. And that confidence is not far-fetched. That confidence is genuine because I've seen it in Winnie. I've seen it in Stella. I've seen it in Julian. I've seen it in so many of our employees. If we don't see it in you, we will kick you out of here. And I will kick, see me, I'm always wearing boots. I will kick you with the boot, I'll be telling you. <laughs> Who is going to perfect this process <coughs> with the right mentality? Look at that guy's hand. He's leaning on the chair. Motherfucker, lift your hand properly. <laughs> with the right mentality, the right one. What is the mentality I'm talking about? Is the mentality of I can do it. I can. I don't need you to carry me, help me, support me. I, don't, I can do it. Hands down. You learn a few things from me. Look, look at me. I never complain. Never. Because I learned it from the Lord. I never complain. Our accounts are still frozen. Government authorities are calling each other. What's wrong? Where is this guy? They say he traveled. They will call me, Charles, please be patient. Just, we're working on it. The minister has asked for him. He's out of the country. I don't say a thing. You can't hear me come and say, oh, no, we're suffering now. We can't pay this because our account has frozen. If it's you, you will talk to the whole world. One, I don't want to embarrass this government at all. So I will be as patient as possible until I really can't take it anymore then, of course. Yeah. Two, I just don't complain. I'm not a, compl I'm not a complainant. Yeah. It's the American spirit. I remember, I had to tell you this, we're copying them here. We're doing what? Copying. We're copying. It's the greatest country on earth, my friend. They have too much money, too much. So you'll be a fool trying to reinvent the wheel. The wheel has already been what? It's already been invented. Mm. So you just go and do what? Copy and what? Yes. Copy? Yes. Copy? Yes. Americans don't beg. Look at you. All of you come here. The first thing is, how much is the salary? When am I getting paid? Yeah. American goes to a job. He says, what do I have to do? What do I have to deliver? This first concern is, what do I have to do? He doesn't ask about the salary. He doesn't. I'm you, I've lived in the country for too long. I know it too well. They don't. Their thing is, what is the job? Knowing fully well, if they do the job properly, what will happen? The money will come. But look at us in Africa. You got, how much? When? Money? When? <laughs> Somebody just began work two days ago. What are you hearing? Complain. 
My dear, not here. Huh? Tell somebody not here. Not here. No, tell that to somebody like you mean it. Not here. Wrong environment. Wrong environment. Change, location. Change location. Move away from here. Away. Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> One day I'll tell you the story of how America was built as a nation. You will shock. If I tell you the story of how America was built as a nation, you will shock. Slight example. When they first came from Europe to America, they couldn't eat. They had to, somebody would die from hunger and the environment that they found themselves. They have to cook that person and eat. Hello? Hello. White people were in Europe. They had kings all over Europe. The kings would tell you what to do. They said they're tired of kings. They want a place without any word, any king. any king. So they said they want to go and create a new country where there will be no king. That's what America is. They came and found an empty land. Christopher Columbus obviously found the land. Empty land, full of some local people that you refer to now as what? Red Indians. Red Indians. Yeah. They couldn't survive in that environment. They were dying like flies, those white people. If you die, they cook you and eat. And they were trying to find how to build this nation they dreamt of. They never considered going back to Europe. For them, Europe was what? Over. We have to build, and that's how they built this America. And I can give you the whole story of how the thing now went from eating each other and went all the way to what you see today. So if you look at the people that were eating each other and look at Uganda, who's, who's better off? Uganda. Uganda. Uganda is already better off. So developing from here, how fast? Very fast. From where they were to where, we, where Uganda is now. Which one is going to move a lot faster? Uganda. It's already at the point where it can bam. Hmm. But you have to adopt that American attitude of I can do it by myself. You are not going to feed me. I am going to walk into these premises with my chip on my shoulder. That I'm doing my job and I'm getting paid properly. I want to take a few questions. Anything that's confusing, I want to take questions. Go ahead. Anyone? Question. Or oh, forever remain what? Uh -huh. <laughs> no question. You see? You see? You see, you had no question. Did you? Did you have comment. any question? Comment. comment. Yes. I didn't say comment. You see what I say? <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart. I just put my hands up. Okay. So yes, because they understood. No questions, then you have comment. You have comment. Yes. But let's hear that comment. Go ahead. <laughs> the comment was Shut on. Up, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> the comment was on yesterday's um, training for redirect. When I think of what we're trying to do, we're trying to get into everyone yeah we're trying to bring them out of poverty i love the idea but the payment strategy of using um visa is yeah it's a great idea but it's not really applicable to uganda right now when you look at the common man because you're going to go to that guy in the village who doesn't have an email okay are you done are you done Okay. <laughs> See, the thing about this kind of people, eh? <laughs> Pay attention, let me describe her. They're intelligent, but the intelligence is a modicum. But you have that modicum of intelligence, but your confidence in your intelligence is more than the intelligence itself. You're not following what I'm saying. You're intelligent, but your confidence in your intelligence is more than what? It's not a good thing. 
One, we are a social enterprise. We are what? So we must bring good improvement to the society. Hello? Hello? One of the biggest problems in Africa is the fact that Africans are unbanked. They're what? Unbanked. unbanked means don't have bank account. They're what? Unbanked. unbanked. Let me tell you how it works. Now, Bank of America or HSBC or Lloyd's are big, big banks all over the world. Now, Ugandan bank, let's say Tropical or whatever bank here, will approach them overseas and say, hey, can you guys give us $50 million to put in our account? This is what all the banks in Africa, all the world would do. You borrow from bigger banks. So give us $50 million, um, a bank in Uganda will say, to HSBC in the UK. Give us $50 million and we will give it as loans to help small business owners, wives, whatever, all these kind of people. And we'll take small interest, we'll make only 2%, we'll return 2% back to you. Now, to be honest with you, any bank in UK, America, will gladly give because the interest rate in the UK is very low. Interest rate in Africa is what? Because there's no there's scarcity of funds. Now, but listen, the bank will say, okay, how many people are banked with your bank? How many accounts do you have? You will be shocked to hear that the average commercial bank in Africa will have about 40,000 bank accounts. And the population is 42 million. So now the bank in the UK will say, well, 40,000 bank account, no, we're not going to give you the money. So Africa being unbanked is a major impediment to develop. Now, if you have a program that can encourage people to do what? You must do what? You must follow through that program. Now, if our concern is just to make quick money today, 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 then we will appeal to the common man's present condition, which is to give you cash. But we're not thinking about today. We're thinking about when? We want to migrate Uganda. In fact, there's a publication, there's a material I wrote, which they have designed. They're going to print it out and give it to everybody. It will be all over this country. It's called Benefits of Online Payment. Read that material. When I wrote the material by myself. It will come out. I think by tomorrow they would have given it to you. It's called what? Benefits of online payment. You have to start educating people. Why? You need to be paying or leaving through the internet. Stop your... F huh? Stop what? Talk too much. And the worst part, you go and tell it to your analyst. You say, ah, paying online. Ah, people don't like to pay online. Oh, this, uh. How about you just do what? I promise many CEOs of banks in Africa, many. I prom I'm sure I can't count the number. I promise quite a few top banking people that I am going to personally increase the amount of Africans that have bank accounts. And now I employ you to help me make that a reality. Then you tell me, no, chairman, let's forget about the online payment. Let them pay offline. There they come up, man. Look at you. <laughs> That was a good one, actually. Thank God I was able to address that. You see, it still points to the fact that you need to do what? You need to shut up. <laughs> you talk too much. For nine years in America, I was a business consultant. Highly paid one. And my thing is corporate strategy. So I'm able to help. Organize. Now, but listen, when I go to a company to do consulting, for three months of hanging around their premises, I don't say a word. Huh? I what? 
I don't say anything. I'm the consultant that everyone is, ah, oh, Charles, he's so good. So when I come, they're like, okay, maybe one week of being here. But I'm not going to like that. They know how you feel. So I work for three, three months. I'm just inspecting, looking at their revenue, looking at this, looking at that, looking at their marketing strategy, looking at three months. I say nothing. Then around the fourth month, I come up with my, this is my proposal. You have come here. You have not even stayed one month. You're already here. You have an opinion about everything. Some fools even came to me one day. They said, ah, Chairman, the Blumen is a great company, but the, the management is the problem. And these fools came and met us grown with that management. How can you be that quick to conclude that the management is a problem when you just came here last month? Who is the arrogant one now? You are the arrogant one. I'm a top level consultant in business and I will come to consult for you and for three months I won't tell you anything. I'm just listening, listening, observing, listening, looking at records, listening, going through your website, listening. I'm just observing. <laughs> See, that thing called opinion is also called asshole. Opinions are assholes. It's an American saying. Opinions are what? Asshole. Everybody has. Everybody has one. <laughs> eh? yes. Because opinion is what? Asshole. Everybody has. One. Uh -huh. So keep your opinion where? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You are spoiled by your own You are spoiled by the man. Spoiled you. Yeah, he's point to you. Pampard loved you people too much, cared for you too much. If people are so terrible, a man that loved and pampered and spoiled you this much, you should be wearing his t-shirt every day. You should be wearing his t-shirt. <laughs> he spoiled you, you're all spoiled. You come somewhere, you start, you start talking. Ask, them, ask those original Kickstarters about me. Assuming that me and you, now maybe I'm, I'm your supervisor. I will physically manhandle you. You didn't hear what I said. Huh? Physical, physical I will physically, I will beat you. I'm ready for the consequences with police or whatever, lawyer. But I'll have beaten you, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna win this war? Who's gonna win it? Who's gonna win? The winning the war means perfecting the process. Perfecting the process. That's how to win the war. We're going to perfect it, perfect it. Look at China. Took time. Put your hands down. I'll tell you about China. Very poor country. Hello? Hello. What? Very poor country. So poor they had to make law about having babies. The law came from poverty. They have too many children. Poverty everywhere. They said, no, from today, if you get married, only one child. What did China do? Kept quiet. America, the whole world is moving. They, kept, they stayed in. They were planning, getting their shit together, perfecting their process. They said, we have one billion people, so let's put them in manufacturing. Eh? Are you listening? Yes. So the whole plan is we're going to have manufacturing all over here to employ our one billion people. Since we have too much population, let's get into manufacturing. Slowly, slowly, they started building China quietly, quietly. Look at it now. Look at China. Everything is made in China. Apple. It's made where? China. Yeah. 
China released how many billionaires about three years ago? If I, they released so many billionaires, America said, what the hell is going on? America became jealous. That's how Donald Trump started doing all this. You people have too much money. The same poor China, poor. Like, it was poor. It's not, it was middle class. It was a poor country. But you have to have a plan. You have to stick to the plan. You have to keep moving. Right now, we're going to have 5,000 analysts here. Period. They're going to cover the whole African continent in terms of the language here. Period. We're going to get that process perfect. We don't have another plan. That's the plan. We stick to the plan. We don't change. We don't, next week, 1,000, or oh, tomorrow we're going to do this. We don't do that here. From the 5,000 analysts, they are going to invite 40 mentors each to Kampala. The mentors will register 10 ACPA before they come here. We will assist them with whatever way they're going to fly here. The ones that cannot come will still register and watch the video from their country. We're going to have over 100,000 mentors, lecturers, here at the stadium. I'm concerned about that stadium right now because I'm sure it's going to require us to put so much money. Because we cannot represent Uganda in a horrible way. We don't want lecturers coming here and going, oh, this should, should have been better done in South Africa. We have a better stadium. When the mentors come here, then we'll have 200,000 mentors, 40 from each analyst. Then the mentors will recruit the people working under them as redirectors. That's what that platform is all about. Those redirectors will be 5 million of them across Africa. I am going to meet each number. I'm going to meet the number of 250. The most important number to me is 250 strong supervisors. That's the most important number. That's it. Which is why we're going to drop 100. 200, the supervisors have to be... Because once we get them perfect supervisors, then we have analysts. 5,000 will be nothing. Then the supervisors will know what to tell the analysts and support them to get the mentors. When we get the mentors, we have immediately we get the mentors. I guarantee you within two weeks, we'll have 5 million. Read the with five million redirectors, they are selling phone, they are selling our car, they are selling our OBF. Everything we bring from 25 companies, they are selling in their country. Before Christmas, we have more money per month than the Ugandan entire government has. From that point, we will start developing the country. We will start building housing estates, building factories. I tell you something. No matter what we bring in terms of development, we're also going to maintain the same standard that you have here. Ah, are you joking? People working there must be what? Productive, responsible, self-sustained. So before you know it, we're creating factories, we're building housing estates, we're demanding the same work culture and mentality from everyone who works anything we set up in the country. Who can see Uganda develop now? Hands down. We have a plan. We must stick to it. If it gets rough, we have to hang in there. It's not to get rough, you quit. It gets rough, you, you dig it even deeper. Because the Bible says, for the glory that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. For what? For the glory about Jesus Christ. They said, talking about the Lord. Jesus said, for the glory that was set before him, he endured the pain. He despised the shame. Just for the glory. Now there's a glory set before you. You can't mama. You have to despise the shame. You have to endure the pain and press on towards the mark until you see that glory. I didn't plan to stay this long. My sons are mad at me. I have two grown sons. My first son is 18. My second son is 14. They are mad at me because I've stayed here too long. 
They're in the UK. They are mad. They, 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 they don't even want to talk to me on the phone. But I have to endure that pain. For the glory. Because those my sons will grow up and they'll say, Ah, your father, ah, he changed Uganda. He developed that. That's the glory. As they say, no pain, what? No pain. I can't hear you. No pain. So you know all these things, eh? What do I need to come and tell you? Today we're supposed to present 10 SUVs to our people. Now where's the SUV guy? Is, is, he, is he avoiding me, man? Behold the man that embarrassed us today. Richard, these people are embarrassed. All these people here. You want to apologize to them? I should do it on your behalf. Okay, don't do it. Let me help you. Richard got a miscommunication from Rachel, my assistant. Now, that miscommunication was this. I told Richard, bring the SUVs. The later on, I told Richard to tell Richard to also bring saloon cars. So we can empower at least 50 supervisors with saloon cars. Because of what I'm about to ask them to do. Then Richard misunderstood the information to say, forget about the SUVs and do what? And focus on the saloon cars. So I think he only, how many do you have now that makes, that is the type one? Only one, right? No. Really? Did they bring two? When? Oh, nice. Does it look like the black one? No, they are white, but the same type like the black one. Okay. Have they put the stickers on them? Yes, they, this one they have already put, the others they are putting that side. Okay. When they put the three of them, you bring them here. Okay. Here. That's one, two, three. Okay. Let's start with that. Do it now. Okay, so luckily he's been able to suss a few, so we, we're going to give to three people. Then again, we'll do again. Then we'll do what? Again. Then what? Again. Then what? Again. I can't hear. Again. I can't hear. Again. I can't hear. Again. I can't hear. Again. Until he gets to who? I can't hear you. Again. You're not following. <laughs> you have to say, we'll do again. Again. Until... Again, sometimes people think I do things out of kindness. I don't understand this kindness, kindness, kindness. Eh? See, God trained me. I'm not kind. I'm principled. If you call principle kindness, good for you. But it's not kind. I think because you think I'm kind, you think you can manipulate me. I'm not a kind person. Huh? I oh, know. <laughs> It's principle that I do. Principle. It's not kind. Kind is like foolishness. I don't do kind. Why is kind foolishness? The Bible says, cast not your pearls to dogs, lest they trample on it and devour you. So, that's kindness, right? But he said, don't give it to who? Yeah. So, kindness is not a good thing, my friend. The principle. The principle is this. We want to declare an economic war. Oh, we have. Have we? We have not even declared. Have we declared the war? Yes. yes. We have declared. We have declared. Yes. But we have not said that fight. We said that fight. No. no. Okay, we just declared. Yeah. That's a lot of talking, eh? Until we engage, eh? Nothing has happened. So we declared an economic war on behalf of an entire continent. So for me, every single person that work here must have an SUV. How many people? Yeah. 
It's as simple as that. Why? Because what are you protecting going to war? You go to war to do war. To protect something, isn't it? Yeah. You go to war to do war. You want to protect something, so you go to war, right? Now, you guys don't have anything you want to protect. So you need a better house. Somebody say amen to that one. Amen. You need a, 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 an SUV. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Now, when you have those things, then you have something you want to do war. How will you fight in that war now? How will you fight in that war? When you have something that you're what? That's the idea of these SUVs. We want to actually give you brand new that we brought or imported or whatever it is. We will start with what is available. Eh? Yeah. Are you following? Yes. We'll start with what is available. We'll keep upgrading, keep getting better. Everybody is going to have an SUV here. Amen. Who are we giving this thing to? <laughs> so Richard, next week, eh? We'll do a bigger one, eh? Next week, a bigger one. Uh, more cars, more people, better cars. Uh, the first person I'm going to, and I want you to give him proper ovation, the first person deserving to drive one of these cars and to run around and do business and grow the company because when we empower you, it's for you to do what? Uh, yeah, you have to get better. Uh, if we empower you and you don't get better, we'll take it back. <laughs> Look at you. Hey. Mr. Benny, why? <laughs> Why? Why have you spoiled these people so far? <laughs> My friend, we give you something. The Bible says the Lord called one, ten talents, eh? yeah. five talents, one talent. Uh -huh. The guy with the ten came back, brought return. Uh -huh. The one with the five came back, brought return. Uh -huh. The one with the one had no return. The Lord took it from him, put him inside the hellfire. What are you talking about? <laughs> I cannot break that principle. I can't. I have to follow the same principle. So I give you something and there's no return. Huh? Why is that confusing for you? <laughs> Conrad Atieno. Why Conrad? Having these 5,000 analysts is our number one primary concern today. Not last month. When? 5,000 solid, intelligent, focused, driven. I have not seen anyone among the BDMs who took recruitment as seriously as Conrad. Where from Itiri House, he took it so personal. He understood, okay, we need 5,000 people to fill up the hour. Ah, he started everywhere he can, talking, organizing, training, meeting. Now we want him to keep doing the same thing, but driven by a car, a driver in an SUV. Give it up for Conrad, this means I expect you now, not just to have your 100 analysts complete, but to now aim to have 10 of all the BDMs. You are going to help all of them to complete their own. Are you following what I'm saying? That is the meaning of any of those cars you're going to go home with today. 
It means more responsibility. You still find that funny? You see, because you don't read. The Bible says, to whom much is given. You don't know that scripture. To whom much is given. That's how it is. Much has been given to him today. So much is what? Very simple. And if he doesn't deliver much, what happened? <laughs> Why do you find that part funny? He doesn't deliver, we take it back. It's how the Lord trained. Why don't you people start reading your Bible? <laughs> I want you to understand how seriously we're taking this. Having these 5,000 analysts is like having, I don't know how to explain it to you. It's, there's nothing more important. So if you're a BDM, you're a DGM, you're a supervisor, there's nothing more important than for you to make sure that every team is filled with the right people. I'm going to make myself available. I'll be here as often as possible, talking in that training room or this training room, until every mind is illuminated with proper information. That's a lot of work for me to do. I'm the same person who has to sit in my office and create the TRS app. He hasn't finished. The SIP app hasn't finished. The TRS2 app hasn't finished. I'm supposed to be in my office in the city house working on those things. But now I have to leave that alone and come here to make sure that all of you start to think the same way. And my darling, for making that comment about the uh, online payment, just to further tell you, the online payment makes it easy for them not to pay cash, not to pay the whole thing. You put up a card, and every bank issues Visa and MasterCard. Every bank in Uganda. So we're going to make them go and go and open that account and get the Visa and MasterCard so that we develop the country. That's how we, that's called development. I've not finished. See, I'm not a fan of clapping for me. I'm not a fan. Now, what I want to tell you, they have a chance to now select a payment plan. So it's not a burden on them. So they can decide to pay, what, $15 a month? That's 60 k a month. Who feels the pain of that? I can't hear you. Anyone feels the pain of that? No one feels the pain of that. But without an online payment where they can put a card and say, okay, $15 a month, then they have to cough out how much? 300 or what? 400 or whatever, how much that thing is, huh? And pay. So it's it's a lot better. That's what there are too many benefits of that. I'm trying to choose from that your list. All I know is Conrad is most outstanding. Who else? Mm -hmm. And who? Hope. Mm -hmm. Simon. Mm -hmm. Wrestler Ako. Mm. Uh, Philippa and Alice. Okay. Anything that has a Alice inside. Alice is inside the thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. So it means Alice will take it, isn't it? Because Alice is inside. Yeah. Where's Alice? Give it up for Alice. Come on. <laughs> Come here. Inside that same group, because there are eight of them, I asked this guy to bring ten vehicles, thinking we'll do the eight, and then we even have two more for people that finish their own today. It's just an encouragement. It's just an encouragement. It's just the beginning. I'm telling you, it's what? 
Let me, let me tell you something that will shock your mind. I guarantee you, I what? See, I don't talk careless. I guarantee you that you will be gathered one day, probably maximum of one year from today. I will give our staff here private plane. I didn't hear the word. Private. No, the word. The word. Private. Smart guy there. The word is guarantee. I guarantee you that. Guarantee you. Guarantee. I'm not, not a promise. I guarantee you. It won't be one. It won't be two. It won't be three. It won't be five people. I probably will be up to ten. Poverty can be kicked out too easily. Poverty. Follow the right principles, you do what? In fact, you can kick it out of your life, your children's life, your grandchildren's life, your generation. You can kick poverty completely away from all that lineage. The third person want to give this today. Also in that list, but two outstanding. So she's two outstanding from all the targets we've ever done in this company. Give it up for Philippa, please. Mm. Mm. Okay, you choose. You choose what you're interested. Stand beside what you're interested in. <laughs> <laughs> For he is the Lord. the King of Kings for this wonderful day. It is the beginning of the process. Hello? Hello. What is it? The it's the beginning. It's the beginning. Every single... Next week we'll give again. Huh? Yes. The week after? Are you listening? Yes. Uh, we'll keep until one day ceremony nobody will say, ah, SUV, no problem. <laughs> we'll get you there. We'll do what? Yeah. We'll get you there. Well, even me won't come to give it again. It will be nothing. Uh -huh. Maybe a BDM will give. Eh? Yeah. The Lord bless you. Bless the Lord keep you. keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Yeah. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. Yeah. All the days of your life. Yeah. Listen, you will profit from this company. Yeah. Your poverty, poverty in your family, you, you will kick it out by yourself. Yeah. Your parents will respect you. Yeah. Your community will honor you. The Lord himself will take glory in your success. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Africa! Bus! Africa! Bus! Africa! Bus! Africa! Bus! Africa! Bus! Africa! Bus! Africa!
Satisfies here, please. Your name, your position, Speed. then I'll ask you some questions, yeah? Sound? Yeah, please put it. Okay, hi, how are you? Hi, my name is Frances Philippa Elizai, mostly known as Philippa. And uh, by position, I'm a DGM, that's Deputy General Manager. Thank you. Can you, sorry, can you go again and tell me I'm development? And then, can, 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 and then talk to her. You look channel. at her, don't yeah, look at the camera. Development mm, channel. Look at her. Let's go start. Your name and your position at development channel. Let's yeah. go still rolling. Okay, we're still rolling, so let's go again. My name is Frances Philippa Elzai, mostly known as Philippa, and I'm the deputy general manager in development channel. How did you come to get the car? Ah, it's a very exciting story. I I came to development channel as a desperate person who wandered in Kampala here from one company to another, always looking for survival for myself, for my family, as a single mother and all that. So coming here and listening to chairman and looking at the vision, the mission of Development Channel, poverty education and all that, I'm like, this is the place. So you know when you are passionate about something and then you have a belief in something, I put all my energy and here you know this is a self-reliance kind of company, everything is about target. When he gives a target like it's one, I, I go double. When he says it's two, I go double. Because I believe in the thing and it's in my blood and the confidence and all that, ensuring that everybody should be part of the company. And that's just how today I'm able to make it here. Is it going to motivate you to work harder? Are you going to hit more targets? In fact, right now I feel like running around to ensure that every single person gets a cut. Because there is a lot. I feel so energized. I want to train, I want to ensure that every other person I'm able to mentor the way I do, everybody should do in the same way. So all of us should be driving. Thank you. Cut. Speed, sound. Talk to her. Okay, Don't look so at you're going camera. to tell me your name, your position at the development channel. Then I'll ask you like two questions. Speed. But give me some excitement. You just got a car. <laughs> well, my name is Alice. I'm here. I work at Development Channel as uh, right now my position is Deputy General Manager. That's my current position. But I started as a single mother who came to the program. Though it wasn't easy because all of them target, target personal, I'm not a business person. But I got into it and I found it very interesting. And while I was into the system, I always my a superstar almost. I was always beating the team, beating the team. Before I was a, a, a deputy general manager, I was a single mother, then I came in as a TRS advisor. While we were given targets and we were meeting all that, we were all promoted to business development managers. Wow, that was so interesting. So still we're asked to, to, to recruit a team. I recruited a team and we were given a target of 25 million. I did a target three, like three times the target. I met the target three times. So instead of doing 25 million, I had about 18 million. And as we moved on, it was so exciting. My friends were like, but Alice, how do we do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? I said, it's beyond what you think. Because I would sometimes leave the office and just move out up country. No work. And when I come back, to Alice, you're going to kill us today. You're going to make your chairman kill us. You're going to come up with a lot of money. You're going to kill us. Don't give it all. Give us some. So I would give some to my friends. My colleagues are like, yeah, you're the best, Alice. Like so as I give to them, also they push on their targets. But still, well, well, they kept giving us targets. Met, man, man, the best, the best, the best. Next to the GM, the general manager. But um, while they were promoting deputy general managers, I was a man who was promoted to deputy general manager. But it was all about hard work, focus, and being that self-driven, that focus of target minding. That's how it all went on. It was so exciting. And today is more exciting because I, th I didn't expect to get this car. I didn't expect to get this right. Because they gave us a target as managers. People made that target, but I was like, I don't think I'm going to get this because the business managers will do that. But DGMs will not, the deputies will not get that. We're giving priority to, be, to, to, to the business managers, not the deputies. But when they read my name, I just was like, did he say it rightly? Or did I hear well? 
Alice, where are you? Alice, where are you? Is it me? They said Alice are calling. Oh, what? I don't think I need, I don't think I expect a car today. So is Aoka going to motivate you to work harder? Are you going to make oh, more yeah. targets? Are you it's me and my team. Not only me, but together with my team, yes. I'll not say that I'm going to use it as deputy general manager only it now. It's going to be me and my team. Sometimes it will go beyond management. You surrender it to the team to and, and motivate them work harder than that. Okay, thank you. Speed. Speed. Camera. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hi, my name is Conrad Piano. I'm a business development manager at the Women Channel here. In Uganda? Yes. How did you come to get this car? Uh, I think a month back, we were given a task of recruiting over 100 people. And uh, that was a target we given by the chairman. And uh, I so happened to be one of these very lucky ones who met the target and went beyond. So I was helping the others because I made my 100 and I've been helping to punch the other, other teams. So all those 100 people have all the qualification, but they have also made their targets for being qualified staff here. So what's your goal after this? Do you think you're going to achieve more? Has it motivated you to work even more? Oh yes, absolutely. I'm so much motivated because uh, I got to now confirm our chairman is so rewarding. And uh, he made the promise and today he has met his promise. And uh, I am really going to strive to work so much hard to help the rest of the team because the task now is to ensure I help the other people who have not met the team yet, but also ensure that uh, the set up targets that are already put already, I am helping to ensure that I work with this team that I'm hired to meeting that target. Thank you. Right, this has been a wonderful thing and can't imagine an SUV. I'm very excited about it.